Speaking of trying to take somebody down, Candace Owens, the right-wing firebrand, black uh, conservative political commentator, recently came for the gays. She posted a big YouTube video uh, where she finally gives her thoughts on homosexuality. Uh, and, and Hannah and I are going to react to this. It, just going into it, Hannah, I have a feeling it's going to be a doozy. I have a feeling that her thoughts are the average 80-year-old white boomer's thoughts because that's who she plays to. She basically is like, if you're in the market for somebody who to just regurgitate what 80-year-old white men think, she's, she's your girl. Like, she's got it covered. So, here so, we go. Candace's thoughts get off to a great start. Let's just listen to the introduction of her video. One Is homosexuality natural? Yeah, let's talk about homosexuality because it seems that a lot of conservatives shy away from that topic now. So this is an interesting one because A, I actually don't think people shy away from this topic very much, but also is homosexuality natural? Is uh, We know where she's going with this. She thinks it's not. But also like... This, this talking point has never made sense to me because natural doesn't equate to good. Vaccines are in unnatural. They're artificially man-made and they save lives. But AIDS is natural. Hurricane Ian is natural. Like the idea that something is natural, therefore is good, has never made much sense to me. And also homosexuality is observed in nature in literally hundreds of species. So... It's observed throughout human history, like going back to freaking classical era Rome, right? It, I, I just, this is not setting us up well, Candace. You're not priming us to go into this and have a good time. You're starting to make me think that maybe this video isn't going to be the best. I just, I hate this trope on the right too, like the far right. It's not everybody on the right, but like this whole trope of like, no one has the guts to confront this very big culture war issue that they all spend all their time, day and night thinking and talking and tweeting about. Like, I'm going to be the one to do it. It's like, honey, you literally only make money because you'll go say offensive things. Like, shocker, but, you're, you're brave. You're going to say the offensive thing about gay people. Wow. <laughs> like, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like you've already made your 50 videos about trans people for the month. So you're going to go back into this well. I mean, she she sort of has a point that like, the right doesn't talk about gay issues as much because most of the right is accepting now. Because like they have majority cares. support of gay marriage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's talk about this because she actually makes an interesting point uh, a, a few minutes later in the video. Take a listen. So a Gallup poll found that today 7.1% of adults in the United States identify as either lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, or something other than straight or heterosexual. Now, 7.1% today, but in 2012, 10 years ago, that number was 3.5%. So what changed? How, how did we more than double the amount of adults that identify as LBGTQ or something other than heterosexual since 2012? That, that just feels a little bit impossible to me. Does it feel impossible or could it maybe have something to do with, I don't know, gay marriage becoming legal, society becoming more open, not getting your head pushed into a toilet for being out? Yeah, maybe. if you, I mean, if you just look at polls between 2012 and now on gay marriage, on gay acceptance, on all these things, they've just skyrocketed. So that's a huge part of why. And, and it's like this idea that 7% is this massive social contagion. Well, like... Estimates on this are really varied, uh, but it, when you survey people anonymously, not on do you identify as gay, but have you experienced same-sex attraction, you'll get results anywhere from like 4% to 20. And they, there's like a, a really long time, like one in 10 men is gay. It's kind of a, not fake, but like an archaic statistic, like just one of those things people say. It's not really a specific study found this, but like the idea that 7% would be abnormally high is, is detached from, from reality. If, if it starts getting really high, like for example, I actually think there's some merit to the point that like among Gen Z, it's becoming trendy. <laughs> like the numbers that say they're LGBTQ plus is so high and, and they're starting to get clout for it. And so a lot of them will say they're bisexual and then they're actually just not, right? But like generally speaking, the idea that 7% of people are saying they're LGBT Q, one, that includes more than just gay people. It includes transgender right. people. It also includes some new categories that are kind of silly and open-ended. 
So it's like that is not a surprising statistic or evidence of some like nefarious scheme. It's like about what you'd expect. I like how she's like, I, 7%, I've never met one. <laughs> how could they possibly be at 7%? Well, actually, it, elsewhere in the video, we're not going to run the clip from this, but she talks about how she knows a gay person who is non-practicing and knows it's a sin, so he's gay but just doesn't have sex. And I'm like, that ugh, that's a whole thing we could get into. I, um, that is a whole deep issue thing, but I can't stand it. That's I, I hear that in religious communities a lot. And it's like, so your answer for people who are gay is that they should just be miserable and alone and never have sex? Like, ugh. Great solution, guys. Great. That sounds yeah. awesome. But so the most controversial part of this that really went viral was when she talks about Ellen, who folks know as the very popular daytime TV host and uh, lesbian who uh, earlier in her career was actually fired for being lesbian, but then it be kind of redounded to her benefit eventually as a huge part of her brand. Um, take a listen to what Candace had to say about Ellen probably being a fake lesbian who only likes women because she was molested. And if you're a person and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'm a lesbian, what an amazing lesbian icon to have to follow, right? Everybody likes Ellen Generous. Everybody loved her show. I still enjoy snippets from Ellen Generous's talk show, and she became one of the most popular hosts. Not mentioned, however, and I am not trying to draw conclusions for either of these women, but both of these women have also talked about the fact that they were sexually abused when they were younger before they found fame, they went through periods of sexual abuse. Is it related? It's understandable, I suppose. Of course, it's understandable that if you had been harmed by an individual of a certain sex, that you would shy away from all healthy sexual relations with that particular sex. But is that the right thing, right? Instead of acknowledging that these people have been harmed and trying to help them, we now have a society that just celebrates it. They just say, oh, this is completely normal. It's just this, everything that you're feeling is completely normal and it's completely valid. And buried beneath could be an individual that is hurt, that is still hurting, and that would make different decisions if people reached in and helped them. But we can't talk about that because that would be, I guess, gay conversion therapy, right? Which has all of these dark medieval tones, according to the internet, according to leftists. One of the things I love about Candace Owens is when she thinks she stumbled on some new thought, some new point. Like, nobody's ever suggested that there could be a relationship between sexual assault and being LGBT before or growing up to be gay or lesbian. Wow, what a novel insight. Can't, like, that has been a talking point for forever. And it's never really made much sense because there are tons of people who were molested as a child who grew up to not be gay. And there are tons of people like myself who grew up to be gay and, and were never sexually molested or abused in any way. And uh, there's actually been a lot of research into this question. And, and you'll find studies on either side saying there's a slight correlation or there's not a correlation. Uh, but so, so actually, I decided to, uh, it bothered me that Candace is making this point, but she's literally just talking about two anecdotes, Ellen DeGeneres and one other singer that she mentions earlier in the video. I looked up some studies for this, and I found one that, that entitled, Does Maltreatment in Childhood Affect Sexual Orientation in Adulthood? Uh, and this is from the National Library of Medicine. And it found that in instrumental variable models, history of sexual abuse predicted increased prevalence of same-sex attraction by 2% and same-sex identity by 0.7%. So that would be a pretty small difference, but uh, a difference, right? It would have some small impact potentially, but what's really interesting is that they explain in the study that you can't actually make this a causal assumption. You can't assume that they're more likely to be gay because they were abused. It may actually be they were more likely to be targeted for abuse because they were displaying signs of being different or experiencing social isolation that made them more vulnerable to a predator. You know, like the gay kid 20 years ago, uh, obviously was probably socially isolated, which would mean he would be a target but for an abuser wow. potentially. So it's really not a narrative that checks out. It also is just logically inconsistent because the logic from these folks is that a, a woman who was molested grows up to become a lesbian, but a boy who was molested by a man grows up to be gay. That's what they're saying. That doesn't make any sense. 
and the data don't bear it out in any significant way. So the whole thing, uh, she just gives me headaches. I just, I can't stand Candace, never have been able to stomach her. And I just, I don't know how this constitutes for any kind of like actual journal, journalism or commentary. It's literally just her popping off her opinion that's not that well informed and not really backed by anything else per usual in my experience with her content. So I'm not surprised by any of this, but I, I think like, again, it just at this point, you just have to laugh. She's like, we're not allowed to talk about this. Nobody can talk about this. It's like, man, there's hundreds of studies. Like people have been talking about this forever and ever and ever. Like, yeah, I just have. don't get like why she thinks she's a shock jock. Like, it's so funny to me that she like has this she like She thinks she stumbled on new terrain here. She's like, I had this thought thinking about Ellen that no one else has ever thought before. And it's like, uh, ma'am, and maybe if you just read up a little on a subject before i think like even her podcast title for this week is my thoughts on homosexuality and in this whole video she refers to the homosexuals and it's just like it's also melodramatic and it's just like i think this is what happens when you build a brand purely based on outrage attention it's the same reason she just rolled up with kanye in white lives matter hoodies to an event it's like they just have to when you're when you're addicted to any press, any spotlight, any attention, you just have to keep getting more and more outrageous and stooping lower and lower to get that fix or because God forbid people don't pay attention to you. And that's the vibes I get here, honestly, is she just thinks like, what can I possibly talk about today that I can be controversial? Um, because God forbid I don't get, you know, a million views or something or Media Matters doesn't write about me today. Like, they just don't, she doesn't approach these issues with a semblance of, of good faith or even even integrity or, or seriousness. So whatever, Candace, uh, do better next time. But I guess that's our, our, our little check-in on our, our friends over at the Daily Wire for this week. Uh, Culture war check-in. Yeah, that's, they're just really going back to like, they want to go back to the 1980s or whatever. And, and it's just, that's not where people are. Even her fan base. Some of the boomers, yeah, but like a lot of them, just no. I, I just get over it. Build a bridge. Cope and see. Like gay people are are just fine. You're just gonna have to deal with it. You're gonna have to learn to live with it.